Greetings. Well, people liked my previous video, so I thought I would do another video log. Now, in my video today, I'm going to discuss a couple of things arising to do with parties, plus to do with aeroplanes. Well, the first thing I want to say was, well, yesterday I went to a party. It's a bit complicated, but I'm renting this cottage, and I went to a party in the big house of the people who own the big house. They were very rich. Anyway... Well, the point is that later on in the evening at this party, there were, it was the part when someone starts playing the guitar and someone's singing. Now, the point I want to say about it is we've all seen that at a party and there is something really quite tragic about it. Even last night, I mean, I've got to be careful what I say because, because, the, because they might watch this video and then I'll be in trouble about it. But, I mean... The man playing the guitar is actually a professional musician, really good, and the girl who was singing is a very talented singer. But it's still really tragic, something about people like, at a party, like getting together for a little sing-song. It's just... But last night, at least they were quite good at it, whereas at most parties, they're not even good at it. Like, you just get someone, like, strumming on a guitar and sort of saying... Oh yeah, I used to be able to play years ago. Oh, I can't quite get the chords right. Or like they're playing, tinkling on the piano. That's the other thing, it's even worse. Oh, um, oh yeah, I took piano lessons 15 years ago. Yeah, I was quite good when I was young. Oh, I can't do it anymore. It's just so tragic. It's awful. I just think that people should be banned from it. That there should be a ban on people playing any kind of music or singing at any party. And on that subject, that leads me to mention another party that I was attending, I think a couple of weeks ago, to this very day actually. And I was in Melbourne two weeks ago and I was at this party and it was very exciting, this big flat, all like a great big apartment, all posh. Anyway, uh, the point is that it was all very swanky. And at the, later on, um, there was music on and everyone had a few drinks, and I was sort of dancing a bit, and there was this young chap who was about 16 years old at the party, and then I was sort of dancing, and people were amused by my dancing, they were enjoying it, but then he gave me this look as if, like the sort of look that you'd give a tragic uncle, who is sort of like doing a tragic dance, who's got a really tragic life, and then like a moment for a moment, like my heart sank, and I thought, oh, I'm a tragic person, oh God, but then I, I remembered that as well as doing silly dancing, that I am also like a successful, innovative comedian, innovating new humour, inventing things to do with humour. So I thought, it's all right. And indeed, it was all right me doing the dancing because people were actually entertained by it. It wasn't just like everyone going like, like that, apart from one person, the 16-year-old, who was just like, Tragic, but he didn't know who I was, you see. I am quite famous in Australia, but he was one of the ones who happened not to know who I was. So, the point I wanted to make is that you've got to be very careful. If you're going to do tragic dancing at a party, it's best to also know in the back of your mind uh, that you are also a successful comedian who is an innovator who people respect and sort of say, hey, yes, I like that comedian, he's doing very interesting co comedic work. I mean, this is probably not very helpful to, to most of the people watching because I have no idea what it would be like to be doing tragic dancing at a party and not be a comedy innovator. I don't know how that feels like. I only know how it feels to be doing dancing and for it to be all right. Anyway, those are my points about parties.